Hello, my name is Sandra Brown, and I'm here to help you with fear or panic attack that you might be having. If you're having a panic attack right now, let's just take a deep breath through your nose, smell the roses, and blow out the candles through pursed lips. Smell the roses. Blow out the candle. Smell the roses. Blow out the candles. That's good. I have had panic attacks. Right now, I'm 81 years old. It's been a while since I've had one. But I've learned one thing in life, living this long. All the things that are causing that, it's gonna pass. It will pass. It helped me a lot. I'm trying to think of the last one. Probably the last one was when I got a phone call that my mother passed away. One thing I was fortunate is I lived out in the country and I lived on 10 acres so I could walk. And I just got in the backyard and started walking, <laughs> just walking real fast just talking out loud to the Lord. It's a good thing about being in the country. They don't think you're totally out of your mind. You can do all that. That helps so much to do that. And you could cry. If you don't have any place to do that, get in the shower where no one can hear you. Put some music on and get in the shower. Just if you have to cry or talk out loud, but talk to the Lord. Talk to him about it. And you don't have to be phony with him. Be yourself. Be honest. Just talk to him about how you're feeling. And I think back farther when I had an attack was I was married to an alcoholic and, and when I would find out that he was out drinking, I just you know, I, I was reading that one of the things that causes a panic attack is because you're trying to control the situation and you can't. Maybe there's a point you get at that you just, I can't control everything. And you have to turn these things over to the Lord. But I remember going to my girlfriend's house and Linda, if you're listening, it was your house, <laughs> you remember. But I'd go to her house and she would just, bless her heart, drop everything and go walk around the block with me. And I could talk to her and walk. And it must be that stimulation of the walking, the blood pumping and getting it all out of me it helps so much. If you got a treadmill, get on there and just go. Go as fast as you can on there and just talk to the Lord or just talk to yourself, whatever you want to do, but just talk it all out. Uh, if it's something you've dealt with for a long time, it might be you need to go to the doctor for a short period of time. You may need to get yourself on, you see, it could be even some physical thing that's wrong with you that's, that's causing this. I don't think there was anything physically wrong with me. It was just, the anxiety of circumstances in my life. And um, I got through it and I'm okay. And trust me, in this life, you're gonna have trials and tribulations. And it's nothing to do with you that you did anything wrong. We're just gonna have them. The Bible says we will. So don't think it's strange because this is not heaven. 
but he did promise that he would never leave us or forsake us. And we do have the Holy Spirit that is our teacher, our companion. He helps us to pray. But I looked up some scriptures, and I'm telling you, the Word of God is like no other book you can be reading. If you're like me, you cannot read when you're having an anxiety attack. I mean, it's the last thing in the world I wanted to do. But I can read to you. I can read for you. And if you could just get yourself in a comfortable position, try to relax. If you have to go get, if you can get in the car, maybe you can get in the car, close the door. Maybe you could drive to a parking lot, grocery store, parking lot, just to get by yourself for a while and listen. I want to read some scriptures to you. All right. And maybe you could write these down and, and later I put on my funny reading glasses so that I can look over the top and that so you won't get the glare. All right. So this is Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 8. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. Do you know what? The Bible says 365 times. One for each day of the year in the Bible to fear not. It's a command. Don't fear. Don't do it. That's what Satan wants. He wants us all worked up and fearful. And thinking we have to control everything. We have to have the answers for everything. Well, we don't. All right. The next one is in Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Wherever you are. There's no place you go that you can get away from God. He's there. He's there for you. Okay. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is a stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Or what shall I be afraid of? In Proverbs 16 and 24. I, I When I first looked this up, I thought, well, what's this got to do with it? But... It said, pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. I don't know why they had that scripture in there when I was looking up scripture for fear and anxiety. Except that when it talks about pleasant words, so I think we need to be very careful about when we're looking for peace and things from anxiety, we need to be careful about the movies you're watching or the people you're around. Make sure if you if you have someone you want to talk to that's going to be an encourager, not someone that's going to bring you down. Because sweet words, honeycomb, pleasant words are honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. So stay away. I'm not sure why they got that in. I was going to skip it, but I thought I would use that. And then in Isaiah 43 and 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, and you feel like what you're going through is a fire. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. This might be, 
how you're feeling right now. Jonah 2, 5 through 7. The engulfing waters threatened me. The deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down, and the earth beneath barred me in forever. But you brought my life up from the pit, O oh Lord my God. You brought my life up from the pit. If your life is in the pit, God can bring you up out of it. And Romans 8, 30, uh, verses 38 through 39. Okay, Romans 8, 38. Where are we at here? Oh, oh, this is a good one, you guys. This is a good one. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Ah, oh, it's wonderful. 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God, oh, this is good. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, being timid and afraid, but a spirit of power, of love, and self-discipline. And God didn't give us a spirit of fear either. I mean, if we have fear, it's not from God. Trust me, it's not from God. Because he tells us, fear not. Do not be afraid. Do not worry. Over and over and over in the word of God, he tells us that. So I hope this helped you somehow. I speak peace to your situation. Father, I pray for everybody who's listening to this. I speak an answer, Lord, I pray, and answers will come to them. They get out of this situation that's causing this fear. Help them remember, Lord, there's nobody that's more important who loves them any more than you do. We put so much on people on this earth, so much value in, in them, and, and it's good to love people. But God loves you, and if he loves you, He's not going to ever forsake you. You'll, you'll always have him. He knows your future. He knows your past. He has plans for your future. If you're in a situation you feel you cannot get out, pray, ask God to help you. Go to a church and talk to a pastor there. Tell him your situation. If he doesn't have the answers for you, go to another church. Don't give up. You keep doing it. Keep praying. Keep seeking. God, you know, just ask God, say, God, help me. I don't know what to do in this situation. And he will help you. So I just speak blessings to you. Speak blessings to you. And draw close to the Lord. Do your best. Do your best to draw close to him. If you just, if you don't know how to pray, just say, Jesus, Jesus, help me. If you don't know any other prayer, just Jesus, help me. It's a, that's a prayer. That is a prayer. Jesus, help me. Okay, I send my love to all of you. If this has helped you or you have a situation you want to share, go ahead and do it. Feel free. Nobody knows who you are. It's a place you can kind of 
put all your feelings out there safely. And uh, there might be other listeners on here who could share their situations or maybe help you in some way. Okay, God bless all of you. Love you dearly. Bye-bye now.